Hello and welcome to the worked exercise for Python for Informatics Exploring Information. I'm Charles Severance and I'm your guide and guest programmer for this particular example. As always, this material is copyright Creative Commons attribution. So we've been uh, working through a series of exercises that are doing time and a half for overtime and pay of various kinds to look at various if then else. And now we're on to functions. And so we're going to create a function called compute pay that takes two parameters, hour and rate, and it actually does exactly the same thing as uh, the other one. It's just we're doing it in a different way. Okay? So we will start by running Text Wrangler and the terminal program. Turn the program smaller and move to the bottom. Text Wrangler, smaller. And let's go CD Desktop, CD Python for Informatics. And we already got some files here. Oops, let's, uh, let's make use of hours2.py. So I'm going to open hours2.py. Hours3.py was my... Uh, actually, I'll use, I'll, I'll use hours3.py because that's my try accept code. Okay, so the idea is, is we're supposed to encapsulate this bit of code in a function called compute pay. So one of the things you do with functions is you have to define them before you use them. So we're going to put the function up here and use the def keyword, def compute pay. And um, we're going to accept some parameters. Um, I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to call it H and R, just to kind of emphasize the difference between the parameters we use inside the function and, and, the, uh, and the arguments in the call. So the code that needs to be in this, in this function is these lines of code right here. So we're going to cut them out of here, and then we're going to indent them, make them the body of the function. Okay, so now the variables in this function are not h, are not hours and rate. They're p. We're going to just change them all to this. And this, I'm just changing this to kind of emphasize the difference between these variables that live in the function and the variables that live in the calling code. So in the function, they're called h and r and p. And the only one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a return statement in. To return p as the result of the function. And so the, the uh, Python will come in, it'll see the def, it'll read all this stuff, it won't do it. Then the first executable is this try, it still works the same way. And I'm going to change this to be in the main code rate in hours. And then I'm going to put a print statement just for yucky doodles. Print in compute pay. And print out H and R. And then before I do my return here, I'm going to say And I'm gonna print, print out. I'm gonna print out what I'm, I'm sending back. I'm gonna print out the computed pay. And then now I've, the only thing I got to do left is I have got the rate in the hours, and I'm gonna call my function. So I'm gonna say pay equals compute pay, or invoke the function, and pass in rate and hours as my arguments, and then print it out. So here's the main code. Oop. Well, I'll just say. We are back, and then print out pay. So I have a print before and after the call to compute pay, and then I have a print once compute pay starts and when compute pay finishes. Okay, I have to sort of reorganize my screen a little bit here. Get to the point where we can see them all. 
Ooh, I'm going to save this as something else so I don't ruin hours 2. I'll call this hours 4.py. And I'm going to say Python hours 4.py. Make that a little bit bigger. Okay, <clears throat> so I'll type. So what's happened here is it's typing in out in our hour, so it's on this line here, line 11. It's already made it all the way through here, okay? And I'll add a print statement in a second here. So, so, so there we go. It's made it through. It hasn't done any work, but it remembered this code and stored it under the name Compute Pay, and it's here. So now I'll do hours, 40 hours, and $10. So I'm running through this code right here. And then I'm going to end up here next because we're not going to bad, put bad hours in. So the next line that happened is in the main code, which is here. Then it called compute pay right there, so it ended up here. And H is 10, and R is 40. It doesn't quite look right. But the compute pay, we're done, and that's 400, and everything is cool. So it's it's back, right? So let's do this. Let's do another one. And I'll put in 50 hours and $10 an hour. Now that one should have overtime because we put in 50 hours, but it's not. So what is the problem here? 10 and 50 are coming in. We, we're getting the numbers right. We're going into compute pay and it's 10 and 50 and then we're coming back. Hmm. So we're printing out the hours, the H and the R variable. Oh, ooh, 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 I see it, I see it. The mistake is right here and right here. Can you see it? We have these are parameters and these are arguments. These are the real variables, rate and hours. The parameters are H and R. We got two parameters, but we've got the order wrong. So here I have rate first. So H here is rate. And look, if we look at what we print out here in Compute Pay, the first thing we print out is H, but it's really 10, which is supposed to be rate. Oops, so i got to fix this. That should be R to correspond to the first parameter, and that should be H to correspond to the second parameter. And just to keep my sanity, I'm going to print out R comma H, so I'll say rate hours, just to be consistent. Oh, actually, no, 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 no. See how I'm prompting for hours and rate, h comma r. I'll change this to be h comma r, and then make this be hours comma rate because I think it makes more sense for the hours to be first. I don't know why that makes more sense, but now we're corresponding our mnemonic variables inside of our function are h and r that allude to hours and rate, but they're not the same as hours and rate. So h is an alias to hours when this is called. Okay, so now let's run it again and see if she works. So I'll do um, 50 hours, $10 an hour. Oh, I'll bet I didn't save it. 50 hours, $10 an hour. Yay, it works, it works, it works, it works. We got ourselves our overtime. Okay, so, so I'm going to say H equals, and then I'm going to add R equals here, just so that we know which rate and what H and R are. Just add some strings there. <coughs> we'll run it again. If I'd have done that in the first place, I probably would not have made that, I've seen that mistake much faster. So we've got 50 hours and $10 per hour, and so it's working. So just to sort of continue along here on this, I could do this. I could call this function again, and I could say, just to show you how I'm reusing this code, I'm going to make a variable named z, and I'm going to say 
12.2 is my parameter, and my second parameter is $10 an hour. And so now I'm using constants instead of variables, and you will see that it's going to call compute pay once this time, and H and R are going to be hours and rate the first time. And the second time, they're going to be called again, but 12 and 10 are going to be what H and R are the second time. And then print uh, Z, 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 comma, Z. That's just a silly message. Okay? So we're going to, this, this stuff is unchanged. It just prompts and gets us the rate. We're going to call compute pay twice this time. One time with hours and rate, and the second time with 12.2 and 10.0. So let's take a look at how that runs. I mean, need a little longer. Well, let's see. 50 hours, $10 an hour. Oh, yeah. It would help for me to save. Help for me to save. Don't make that mistake. 50 hours, $10 an hour. Okay. So in the main code, then it then it calls compute pay and does one computation. And then it's here, it's back in the main code right there. And then it calls compute pay again. This time, the variables H and R, oops, this time the variables H and R are 12.2 and 10.0. The last time H and R were 50 and 10, okay? The key is, is this H and R, the parameters in the function are ephemeral. They come and they go. Compute pay works with different, different values each time but it uses H and R internally as kind of its scratch area for this. Let's see if I can get this all on one screen. Yes, I can. Okay, so this just is showing that we're running it twice, once H is 50 and the next time it's 12, because it's simply the first parameter. And the first time the parameter was 50, the second time it was 12.2. Okay, so let's just walk through scribbling what's going on here. Just We'll just kind of go through this. So Python starts at the beginning, it sees def, and it says, oh, don't run this code, remember it, name it compute pay. So H and R don't exist, they're not, they don't exist until the function is invoked. Then we get to the try. We got some insurance on these four lines. We read our and convert our input and our, rate, our hours and our rate, and that's good, so we don't run the accept. Then we print in the main code, okay, and then we come to this line and we see compute pay. And so that goes up here. And H and R are hours and rate. And it runs this code. It returns P. And that P comes back as the value here and end up being put into pay. Then we print we're back. Then we run into this statement. And we have to call compute pay. So it goes up again. And this time H and R are 12 and 10. Runs through the code, blah, 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 blah and then returns 122, and that returns to this call, not the previous one, and then that puts 122 into Z, and then the program continues on. So it, again, this does nothing, and it calls it twice, and has two sets of arguments, and the parameters represent different arguments in the different call. Okay? So let me just clean this up one last time and um, get rid of, uh, oops, get rid of the debug print statements, Get rid of that. Um, get rid of this. So you can see what it's really supposed to look like. We don't need that. Well, I'll, I'll just comment that one out to keep it in case of later. This is debug print, so I'll keep that. Get rid of those two. So now it doesn't do any printing. So let's run it one more time. Uh, 40, 10. Good stuff. Uh, 50, 10, good stuff. So it works. So there's the there's the ultimate uh, program, and uh, looks pretty good.